This video is supported by Brilliant. Hey, welcome back, I'm Lai. Saturn V was built in 1967 and 50 years later, it is still the most powerful rocket in the world. Standing at 111 meters tall and with a payload capability of 140 tons, Saturn V is the undisputed king of all rockets. But there is something strange to this statement, isn't it? Something counterintuitive. In the last 50 years, humans have experienced unprecedented development. Literally nothing that was built in the 1960s are better than what we have now. This computer, for example, was built in the 1960s and it had a storage of 16-bit and it's dinosaur comparing to even the smartwatches we have. Televisions at that time looked like this and it was not until the 1970s did colored television sets become mainstream. There was no Apple, Netflix, Facebook, Google, Amazon, not even Microsoft. My point is, we have come a long way since 1967 in all industries, but the rocket industry seems unaffected. If we compare Saturn V to its planned successors, namely the Space Launch System and the Shuttle, none of them are as powerful. Saturn V has the capability to carry a payload that is 140 metric tons, while the number for the Space Launch System is only 70 metric tons. Even at 70 metric tons, the Space Launch System is not yet completed. The shuttle has a payload capability of 27 metric tons, so it's not comparable to Saturn V's power at all. Nevertheless, the idea of reusability is passed down and SpaceX currently thrives on that idea, so that's the contribution of the shuttle. But even for SpaceX, its rockets are not yet as powerful as the Saturn V. So if none of the current rockets are as powerful and as safe as the Saturn V, can we perhaps build a Saturn V in 2018? Why don't we just give up? the space launch system and build a Saturn V instead. Since we built it in 1967, we can surely do that again, right? Well, unfortunately, the answer is no. Counterintuitive, I know, but let me give you a simple example to help you understand why. The Chinese has been working on its own space launcher for the past decades, and it has achieved tremendous progress. But its current level of technology is no way near the level of the Americans in the 1960s. Do they not use the most advanced technology available in the 21st century? Of course they do. Or do Americans know some physics principles that the Chinese don't? Well, no, it's not that. It's the technical know-how and the tremendous hands-on experience that sets the American space program apart from the rest of the world. So who has this technical know-how and the hands-on experience, if I may ask? Well, those people who were in charge of the Apollo program, of course. That's why the Chinese are still lagging behind in the space industry. However, logic that applies to the Chinese also applies to America. Most people who were in charge of the Apollo program are either retired or died. Therefore, this is the first reason why Saturn V could not be manufactured easily in 2018. Recreating Saturn V could be a daunting task that is not worth doing. Is it better? Perhaps. It's hard to admit that something we built 50 years ago is better than what we're doing now, but unfortunately, the capability number reflects that. This, however, does not mean that we can't build Saturn V in 2018. What makes rebuilding Saturn V even harder is the lack of related supply chain. There are over 3 million parts that constitute Saturn V and virtually all of them are either not in production or had been replaced by modern technology. Saturn V was built in the pre-digital era and many parts are controlled mechanically. This instrument ring, for example, is located on the third stage of Saturn V and it contains major systems like guidance and control, electrical, telemetry and measuring, radio frequency and thermal control. These systems alone consist of tens of thousands of moving parts, and every moving part is designed by top-notch engineers from all across the United States to make it work. Therefore, what's harder to recreate is the supply chain of every one of those components on the instrument ring. They're created by companies in the 1960s and are since stopped production. Hence, rebuilding all 3 million components that we used in Saturn V will require an entire supply chain of components, and along with that, thousands of engineers. This is, of course, still possible if we're willing to pay for it. But then the crucial question we need to ask ourselves is, is it still worth it? 
because theoretically, if we build a rocket with modern parts, it should save us a lot of money than rebuilding Saturn V, right? Theoretically, yes, but in reality, not really. Saturn V costed us around $30 billion in today's money, and the space launch system so far has costed us $12 billion. But its development is not yet finished and many more upgrades are on the way in the next decade. It will cost us over $30 billion in the next decade for R&D alone. The space launch system is supposed to be the most powerful rockets on Earth, and with billions of dollars of budget, it is expected to. Yet it's hardly better than Falcon Heavy. That's the frustration we have, and that's why people like me is curious as to whether or not we can build a Saturn V in 2018. Do we really want to build a half a century old machine? Of course not, but the current option doesn't seem satisfactory to us, at least not anymore after we've seen what private companies like SpaceX can do with much less money. This is, I think, the crux of our dilemma. Saturn V represented something extraordinary as if we put hundreds of years of human engineering in one machine and it worked miraculously. The only sad thing is that, can we still make something better? It's been 50 years since the debut of Saturn V. We're still trying. So can we build a Saturn V in 2018? I'd say we can, and as long as we're willing to pay for it, we probably have the capability to recreate a Saturn V in 2018, but then the real question is, at what cost? And most importantly, why should we? You know, I try my best to engage you guys with interesting questions like this because it is, to my belief, the sustained interest and passion to a topic and the deep understanding of a topic that helps someone succeed in the realm of science and technology. However, it is hardly possible for a 10 minute video to cover technical details of a topic as complex as this. Therefore, I recommend Brilliant.org to you. Saturn V has 3 million moving parts and requires a vast knowledge base to make it a possibility. It was built so fast, so brilliantly that it became the envy of most engineers around the world. Courses on Brilliant give you a good framework to enhance your understanding of rocketry and help you link relevant physics topics together. On top of that, it also engages you with interesting problems and examples, help you master concepts by solving fun, challenging problems yourself. I have been checking out their courses on classical mechanics. I recommend you to check it out yourself. So to support Curious Elephant and learn more about Brilliant, go to brilliant.org slash Curious Elephant and sign up for free. First 200 people click on the link will get 20% off the annual premium subscription. It's a pretty good deal. Check it out if you're interested. All right, hope you guys enjoyed it. If you're feeling generous, you can even support me on Patreon. I'll leave a link down below. Uh, it is those of you guys who supported me on Patreon as well as companies like Brilliant that makes this channel even more awesome. Uh, with the support from you guys, I'll be able to create more and better content in the future. And that's what this channel is all about, isn't it? Spreading ideas for science, technology, and innovation. All right, thank you all so much for watching. As always, I'm Lei. I'll catch you guys later.